We would look out and we would see the sun rise and you know on one side of the planet and you know sink on the other side of the planet. So, you know, we had no clue that, but and then later on in life, like through science, we were able to figure it out. But everybody in the world used to believe that. Not only that, but everybody in the world used to believe that Earth was flat. They didn't even, did you know that? Like back in the day, like 500 years ago or something? I like it. Everybody thought that the world was flat. Nobody knew that the world was round. It feels they flat. Were, uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, like you could eventually get to the end of the earth, is what, you know, and it's even in people's poetry, that type of stuff. My whole point in showing that is, look, there's so many things today that are like so integrated in your culture that you guys have just embraced and accepted because it's what everybody does. It's what everybody thinks. It's what's popular. Remember when I told you like what Jesus said, if somebody punches you in like the cheek, you gotta turn them to the other cheek also. And your guys' culture, that's ludicrous. You would never do they that. Knock me out it's it, yeah. If somebody like sucks you, you have to defend yourself <laughs> that in order to be like that's what everybody does, right? But what this guy is trying to say is like just because everybody believes one thing doesn't mean that it's actually true. Just because everybody thought that the earth was flat, that didn't actually change the truth that it was around, it's just everybody's perception was wrong. So, the majority of these people in this world probably would say that, like, they wouldn't agree that, you know, Jesus is the only way, and that they have a relationship with him, and that's everything what we were talking about yesterday. But, is it a possibility that just because it's not popular in the culture and that everybody's not doing it, or whatever, does that change the fact that it's true? Because Jesus himself said that, look, wide is the gate, that leads to destruction. Narrow is the path that leads to eternal life. Only a few find it. That's the like wide is the gate. Like wide leg like, is the path where most people, many people, end up leading to their own destruction. It's a narrow path that leads to eternal life. That's crazy that That's Jesus himself said that. What? Right? Well Jesus said it, not me. Did you have a question? No, no, You do sound like Jesus. Uh, well, I mean, I tried to repeat what he said. <laughs> hey, let's, let me ask... Wait, did you ask something first? Oh, uh, no. All right, let me ask y'all something. So what? where does your code of living live by? I used to live so hard. You guys ever... Do you, is this still around, like, the, the player hater code? Y'all live by that? Like, the PhD type of stuff? Like, what? you guys heard of player haters? Don't be a player hater? Back when I thought I was, like, the young buck, you know, running the streets and all that, like, in high school. Like... It was such a big thing. It's like, oh, you know, you better not be a player hater, dude. Like, and we had all these rules that we lived by, like this code. Like, basically, if your girl comes to me, then I can be with her. But I can't go after her because that's your girl. But if she comes to me, that's fair game, and you can get mad about it. Sounds like a good rule. Right? Code. It's stupid. It's so foolish. It's, it's so foolish. bro code. Bro, oh, bro code now? Well, anyways, we had this whole code to live by and all these, like, unspoken rules. Does it and count? we lived by them, and we would fight for them. And we, there was a, what'd you say? Does it count if you don't know the person? Uh, oh no, Let's crack yeah, the it, no, you can go after any girl if you don't know them. You know, this is your boys, you know, that you're talking about. Right. Look, and then, look, it was, it was foolish, I completely admit it. But, mm -hmm. um, and then we live by the street code too, like, you don't get disrespected, you don't disrespect other people, you don't like, you know, somebody talks about your mom and you're gonna hit them and all that. There's kind of like, that's still out here in the streets, like, there's like a, there's a code of living, right? Where, or else you get punked. Or else you get, you know, disrespected, that type of stuff. Where does that come from? You know, or what code of living do you live by? Do you, do you, or do you live based on how your family raised you? Do you live by what's, like, popular in society? Nope. Do you live based on how your friends want to believe out on the streets? You know, what code of living by, what's your source of truth? By my code of living, the way I could live. The way you want to. So you create your own truth. You create your own code and live exactly how you want to. Oh, no. Okay, so you live how you were raised, like how your parents or what? Yeah. Okay, so according to what they say, do is there anything that your parents would like you doing that you kind of stray from? Because yeah, I mean, right, okay. yeah, who does it? But... Right. So everybody has kind of developed their own sense of like code of living, which was in in essence their own truth that they're living by. A lot of things that God has said, don't do in our culture. We've okayed it. We've, we said, eh, it's not that big of a deal. I'm going to do it anyways because it feels good, looks good. I want to do it. Like, it's not that big of a deal. What God says, like, hey, that separates you from me. And we've, like, in our culture and or in our own minds, we've accepted a truth that it's really not that big of a deal. When to him, he may not look at it like that. He may say, no, you're separated. 
which is deep. You know, like I even do that all the time, even though there's things that I know he doesn't want me to do or live like, and I'm like, you know, I make it not that big of a deal when he may not look at it that way. All right, I want to show this one video. I gotta warn you. It has some explicit scenes in it, but it has some good truth in it. Some what? Some explicit scenes, like some... Let's stuff. crack it Y'all boys are going to have to... What you packing? Y'all boys especially, you're going to have to get it together and just stay in control. I'm telling you. So, but, dude, there's some good stuff. Listen, 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 listen. Watch this. Yeah, some sexual... You know, stuff. Get your fat head out the way. Screw this over head. Read this. The most common way people give up their power is by thinking they don't have it. Okay, she got jackass. American teenagers spend 31 hours a week watching TV. I don't. I don't. I never was. 17 hours a week listening to music. This is on I do. <laughs> Three hours a week watching movies. I do. Four hours a week reading magazines. So 10 hours a week online. <laughs> That's 10 hours and 45 minutes of media consumption a day. Yep. The media is the message and the messenger, and increasingly a powerful one. Oh, yeah. 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 source of information. So if you want to understand what's going on in our society Damn. in the 21st century, we have to understand media. <laughs> If you think city. about media and technology, they're delivering content that is shaping our society. They're shaping our politics, they're shaping our national discourse, and most of all, they're shaping our children's brains and lives and emotions. We estimate there's somewhere north of a billion people who use the internet every single day. That's just a reach that hasn't existed before in terms of media. Our kids today live on Facebook and cell phones. The diversity of the platforms means that those images are impacting your kid 24-7. And whatever restrictions existed when we were growing up simply don't exist today. Girls get the message from very early on that what's most important is how they look. That their value, their worth, depends on that. And boys get the message that this is what's important about girls. We get it from advertising, we get it from films, we get it from television shows, video games, everywhere we look. So no matter what else a woman does, no matter what else her achievements, their value still depends on how they look. There is no appreciation for women intellectuals. <laughs> it's all about the body, not... Uh, that's, you get the idea, like, there's every time, you're 10 hours a day watching, you know, like, stuff and being consumed with stuff that really wants to make money off you. That, like, they know sex sells, they know, like, what's, like, going to infiltrate, you know, your culture and what they can make money off you and stuff. And, like, you're bombarded with you know, your culture being impacted and it's creating codes to live by and these certain truths that you're embracing by people that sit in an office and want to make money off you and stuff. So that's one source of truth that a lot of people, you know, live by. You know, like what type of music do y'all listen to these days? Lil Wayne, Young Buck, GZ, I don't even know. I'm so out of it. Who's, who's I'm still with Eminem. Listen to what they're actually saying. You know, what, all right, Eminem, you know what I say? All right. You know what I say? Like, listen to what they're putting out in your minds and all that. Listen to what the actual lady is saying and what's impacting the culture. This stuff, like, God is so against all this type of stuff, and we just like, eh, it's not that big a deal, it's just entertainment, that type of stuff. Look crazy. Listen, listen, what's the most dominating source of truth in your life? Does it come from your friends? Does it come from your family? Does it come from God? Does it come from media? What dominates the what you've embraced and what you've received? What's, like, the leading source of truth that you've received in your life? What dominates the way you live? Is it the way your friends act and think? That's what it was for me. <coughs> Whatever that was part of their culture, I am. It was the way that I've been raised. It was the way you've been raised. All right, here's what Jesus says. Jesus said, "My," and he calls us sheep, like because you know a shepherd. Oh, calls bro, it. It's a f- metaphor. He's not really talking about sheep. He's talking about his followers. He says, "My sheep follow me because they know my voice. They will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they did not recognize a stranger's voice." Jesus tells us that if, when you get, begin a relationship with him, you can hear his voice among all these other voices that you're hearing, all these sources of truth, whether it's from the media, whether it's from your friends, whether it's from even your parents or your family or wherever it comes from. Jesus says, like, you need to learn to follow his voice and to recognize a stranger's voice and run from that because it's not from him. You know what I'm saying? All right, we got to wrap it up.
feel free to have one more donate. If you didn't get one yet, if you already had one, leave it for somebody that did get one. And you, but you can, you can smash that bag, have more 